I am Walter Washington, owner of Washington AC and Heating uh, here in Houston, Texas and surrounding areas. Uh, every now and then I'm going to come on here and have little talks like this, give tips or recommendations or how I would do things or how I did things or how I would do things differently. Uh, the first topic today is starting your own service business or HVAC business no matter where you're at in your in your career uh, th these are the first things that I would do so number one is I will go ahead and register my LLC and register for my EIN number the LLC that is a limited uh, liability uh, company that you want to register you know with your state and the, and the government so you can go ahead and establish your business name. An EIN number is what you need to file. It's kind of like a social security number, like a business social security number that you need to file when it's tax time or to keep up with all your taxes and your really your business profile and your business background. Uh, so that, that number will go with you as long as you're in business. So, like I said, the first thing I, that I would do, even if 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 you still in HVA uh, school, uh, just grad, graduating out of uh, high school, and you uh, even if you work for a company, or you're just thinking about opening your business one day, go ahead and start filing for your LLC. Even if you're a seasoned technician, or you you've been around for a while and you're thinking about starting your business, even if you got a the inkling of thought of starting your business go ahead and start start filing for your LLC it's very important um, in most states especially mine you need at least four or five years of experience before you can get a contractor license but you don't need your contractor license to start your LLC so even if it's 10 years uh, down the road before you actually get your contact license you can still go ahead and uh, establish your LLC and have your EIN number. So, and the reason why I'm saying this is because uh, years of experience, all, all that's really important. So, if you wanna uh, go ahead and, like I say, you're thinking about starting the LLC, um, and most of the information that I give you is not no get rich quick scheme, it's gonna take money to do this. Like I say, it's gonna take four or five years uh, before you eligible to get your contract license and I, I, I filed my LLC with a company called Legal Zoom. Um, write that down, Legal Zoom. They'll take care, uh, take care of all your filings for you. They have lawyers, it's easy. Or you can uh, get somebody local, like a local lawyer, they can file it for you also. But it's very important to do it legit. You can also do it yourself, but uh, if you're not familiar with that process, or you, you know, unless you just really don't have the the, uh, the money, um, just go ahead and go to LegalZoom. But most of the people I'm talking to, there's probably people that are already working for a company. So you make, I'm sure you're making good money if you're a technician, you got the experience, and you're on a brink of getting your contract license. Uh, like I say, it's going to cost five at least. Let's say, let's say five hundred dollars. Uh, to uh, file an LLC. I think it's a little more cheaper, but they have more perks and stuff like that. Um, maybe we can go on the LegalZoom site and I can show you exactly how much it costs to, to uh, for, for the file for your LLC. Like I say, it's very important to just go ahead and do it because you're going to have all that experience. Just say, if you file for your LLC, your LLC now, it, you have and this say if you get your contract like five years later, but but your LLC you got your EIN number for five years. So once you get that LLC five years later, it's showing that you've been in business for five years. So they give you a, a lot more experience, and so when you want to go and start marketing for Google, uh, you can say your business been established for five years, and that, and that's completely true because you're taking your experience from the field also when you uh, when you open your business. 
So it's perfectly fine for saying, if you've been doing this 15 years, but you only been in business for five years, it's perfectly fine to say, you know, you have 15 years experience. And like I said, if you, if you do it this way, it, it's gonna help with, with your credit in the future because if the credit, um, yeah, because I'm gonna give you a lot more tips along the way that you can do. But when you start establishing your credit, when you get your AIN number, when you get your AIN number, you're gonna establish a bank account and all that good stuff. Another reason to go ahead and file for your LLC, you gotta come up with a business name. And so your business may be uh, on time uh, AC and heating. So if you come up with that name and but you wait five years to when you do get your contract license and within that five years, somebody may have took that name. And that's important in filing the LLC. When you go to LegalZoom or you go to your lawyer and they file for your LLC, they're gonna, um, they gonna look around in your state, look through all the files and see if that name has been taken or not. Um, so it's very important, like I say, if you come up with a good name, good idea, just go ahead and file for it. And then, uh, cause, because when you get your con, when, when you, like I say, you're already going to establish your LLC, you're going to get your EIN number. And then once you get your contract license, that's when you file for the state and you start doing business. Like I say, cause we really don't want to do any business, you know, without your contract license. So it's not legal. Maybe if it's legal, if it's legal in your state, I mean, you, you can go ahead and do that. Cause I don't think all states, uh, probably, Number about, maybe about two or three states that you don't have to have a contract license. I don't know those states. I think Louisiana one, but I'm not sure. Um, like I say, here in Texas though, you like I say you have, it has to be four or five years and pretty, uh, four or five years um, uh, of experience before you can file for it. So. Like I say, it's very important to just go ahead and start. Don't don't wait around, you know, for the best time, because the best time is really never right. You just gotta go for it and, and, and jump. Um, like I say, my, my tech, this, this channel right here is uh, kind of like maybe geared toward technicians. I know a lot of technicians uh, watch my channel, uh, but this channel really not for, um, you know, the super tech. You, you can find other uh, channels that, you know, teach you how to do certain things in the field for, you know, uh, troubleshooting uh, the correct way. But I, I, I do advise, uh, you know, I love this book. I call it, call it the Bible of uh, HVAC. They call it the Modern Refrigeration Handbook. So, <clears throat> business and and, and technical skills are two different things. Like I say, the end goal for this channel, you know, you want to be a good technician for you, you can do a good job once you do become a business owner. So it's very important along the way, with in the four or five years, you get as much technical experience uh, as possible. A lot of hands-on experience, hands-on experience is the best. So if you, you are with a company, a lot of companies don't like for, you know, technicians to do side jobs. I can understand that. If that's their policy, you know, go with it. Um, I, I heard on one guy channel that um, he don't allow technicians, you know, to do side work. A lot of companies don't. I, I only, you know, if it's family or something like that, then you got to report um, to the company that you're doing work for the family. I mean, to me, all that's a joke, but to each his own, because uh, because you you got to get that. You got to get that start some some kind of way. So if you are with a company and they don't condone it, uh, you know side work. Um, I suggest you don't do the side work because you do need the experience, or you can find another company that don't really don't really mind it. I know our company may kind of shine upon it, but as long as it's not affecting, uh, you're not using they. Um, let me take all this back. So. You have to have your contract license. I never did, I mean, maybe once or twice, you know, for friends only. Uh, um, and I don't think I took profit then. I didn't do any side work when I did not have my contract license. 
But do, when you do get your contract license, though, to me, it's fair game. You know what I mean? Um, so, but if you are with a company that don't don't want you to do side work, I mean, either find another company. This when you do have your contract license, though. When you have your contract license, you got your business set up. I'm kind of going way off top, but when you do got your contract license, you got your business set up. Set up. Like I said in one of my other videos, if that company do not want you to do side work, but you do have your con contract license and you are legit to go out there and do side work, either find another company or, because I understand that you do have to pay the bills, so you either find another company or get in, uh, totally in another industry. Whether that be fast food, whether it be Uber driving, whether it be, uh, 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 whoever hiring retail if you got to go stock shelves at a grocery store could keep in mind you can do that at night you might not make no you know two three four four hundred dollars a week but you got to keep in mind if you're doing that at night if you got your contract license you know that's just to maintain till you you start establishing but I'm, I'm gonna have videos to you know how to get established where you, you where you really once you get to a contract license you would not need to um, work for any of those fast food restaurants or a store but I'm just saying if you have to have the money and you have to have another hustle until you get um, the customers and you feel more comfortable with their steady check because I know a lot of us we've been working for you know a steady check um, pretty much all our lives you know, you, you, you're waiting on that, that guaranteed once a week check. But once you get your contract license, trust me, you, you, won't, you won't need, I, I, like I said, I won't say just quit. You know, quit your job, but you do need to build some type of foundation and have a business plan to where uh, you can have, you can get customers. So, let me see, that, that, like I said, this is uh, off the top of my head, I'm, I'm going out, I, I didn't really write anything down, so. Um, so I hope these tips could be useful. But like I say, once you get your contract license, if you if you need to do any type of side side hustle till you get on your feet, you know you got to do what you got to do. Like I say, if a company don't want you to, you know, do, do side work. I mean, it's state companies; they make the rules at the end of the day. But um, I want to just really stay with them, you know. And, and they hold you back like that because the company at the end of the day they for a profit and they 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 really out for themselves so starting the llc like i said there's a limited liability um company to where if you get in any type of accident or somebody want to sue you they can't sue you know your name they can only sue the company so like your social security you yourself, they can't sue you, they can't take your house, your cars, anything like that. But they can, let's say if, if uh, you flood somebody's house out of the ceiling or something like that, and you know, they can't sue you, they can only sue the company. Uh, you mess up all the electrical or something like some weird happen. So, <clears throat> next, next is the EIN number. EIN number is very important. With the EIN number, as soon as you get the EIN number, like I say, you can file it yourself, um, but LegalZoom does that also for like 40 or 50 extra dollars. Um, so you can do it yourself. It's very easy. I think I, I did file mine myself for the EIN number. It's just three steps. You call the federal government. So you get the LLC first, and then you get the EIN number, and you register that, that company name with the uh, federal government. The EIN number. As soon as you get it, uh, like I bank with Chase, you get a, you can get a check in the savings account. Start uh, open both of them right away. If, uh, once you get the EIN number, you get that business name. You can open up how many accounts you want, but start with at least two: a checking and a saving. The thing about HVAC, like I say, most states, like I mentioned earlier, it takes four or five years before you eligible to get your contract license. Ain't no way around it. So you have to um, 
you have to uh, do your due diligence. You got to put your time in, and once you um, once you once you get that established four or five years, put let me give my calculator out. Uh, let's say you want to put fifty dollars in that savings account every week when you get paid, because like I said, you are a technician, so you're gonna be making good money, especially the young guys out there. Uh, you know, fresh out of school, you're gonna be tempted to, you know, you get your car, you know, then you want to get put the rims on the car, then you want to put the speaker, you know, to get the speaker, get the nice sound system. I'm telling you now, think about it, mark my words, I, all that is assets that's going to depreciate in value, really don't mean nothing. Once you get a little older, out, you're going to look back and you don't even know where those speakers at. You don't know what they did uh, did with them. It's uh, it's it's a uh, it's a waste of money. True enough, you can do what you want to do with your money, but like uh, all those uh, car stereo places, and please don't finance. If you do, go, if you're gonna get some speakers or some rims, save your money, just pay cash for it. Don't be paying 20, 30 percent interest uh, for, for these rims, uh, the rent and rolls. Uh, where, you, where you're going to end up paying $5,000 for $1,500 pair of rims. Be very wise wise with your money because you're going to make a lot of money in this industry. Uh, so put your money in the right places. So let's just say there's $50 a week. And I don't, uh, so let's say if you're taking this spread out, uh, straight out of school, and you're gonna make fifteen dollars an hour, so I'm just gonna do fifteen dollars, uh, fifteen, and cause we gotta be wise with our money. Like I said, I, I don't want to go all in, into different directions with this video, but we want to be wise with our money. So, um, cause you're gonna make a lot of money. Let's do do fifteen dollars times forty. That's six hundred dollars a week right there. You know, minus taxes. That's a minus, let's just say 30%, uh, that's a lot. Let's say you bring home $420. And uh, $420. So this take 50, this is just $15 an hour. That's on the, the low end. Once you start you know, in the industry, you're gonna make a lot of money. But let's just do 50, uh, 50, $50 a week. But $50 a week in that uh, business, savings account and it's a uh, 50 and you got fifty dollars a week and you got 52 weeks in the uh, in the year so that's twenty six hundred dollars that's twenty six hundred dollars right there and like I say it's going to take you four to five years to um, to be even eligible to start your business so, so just keep it in mind that that twenty six hundred dollars, then times five years. So you do twenty six times five. That's thirteen thousand dollars. That's thirteen thousand dollars in your business savings account because you have to get the experience anyway. And fifty dollars ain't much because uh, uh, that's just fifty dollars a week. And once you start getting twenty and twenty-five dollars an hour, cause around your fourth or fifth year, you might make twenty-five to thirty dollars an hour. Then you may want to up that to a hundred dollars a week. So I don't want to get too much into numbers, but that just say fifty-two times three. That's one fifty-six then times 50 anyway but this ain't when your third year in your third year you might want to up that because you're gonna be making about 20 some dollars an hour then 25 you might want to up that to a hundred dollars a week I ain't, I ain't, I don't, I'm not doing the math but that can be about 20 20 25 thousand dollars probably if you you know save up another hundred dollars for two years, every week. Let me see that 100. Let's see 52, 52 plus, 52 times two, that's 104. 
that's two years, and you times that a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, two years. That, that's ten thousand dollars right there on top of the three years that you was doing the, um, doing the fifty dollars. So you can easily have twenty thousand dollars starting off. You know, uh, when you're ready to start your business. So you don't necessarily, like I say, if you save your money like that, and the company do not want you to do side work, and you but you put that fifty dollars in there every week, you don't. Be honest with you, you don't have to do any side work because you put $50 in there every week, every week. And, and that's another thing too. Do, do not tell everybody your business. You know, you can tell your significant other, you can tell your family, your close friends or whatever. But as far as your coworkers, when I was working, a lot of my coworkers didn't know what was going on. When I was starting my business, and, and I would start my business like, like my, my business was a Fortune 500 business. But they didn't have to know anything about that. I mean, rarely, uh, maybe one, one technician or something like that kind of, you know, knew what I was doing. But I wasn't going around telling everybody, you know, what I was doing, especially when I first started establishing my business. Because um, um, the other company I was with, it really didn't nobody know. So, like I say, just keep all that. Don't nobody have to know your business because I guarantee you, you know, once they find out, they're gonna tell your bosses and, and then you probably get fired. You don't wanna get fired. So like I say, everybody do not have to know your business. Um, so like I say, just put that, save your money, keep it in there. The only person have to know about it really is you. But oh yeah, I already got my uh, company name established. Um, uh, I already got my EIN number. I already got my checking account. So, because when you're on your fourth or fifth year, you, you first out of school, you probably will be about 25 years old, you know, and and you can start. I'm not a financial guy, or anything like that, but you can you can look up financial things too. You don't necessarily have to put it in the savings account for that. You, you probably want to put it in in some type of. Um, I wouldn't say the RS because you get penalized. I mean the. Uh, 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 what's it called? It like a, uh, the uh, retirement savings for don't do it like that because when you take that money out, it's gonna penalize. But you can put it in some some kind of stock if you wanted to and let it grow a uh, CD, something that they're gonna grow interest. But I just show you with no interest at all, zero interest. Just show you you can have over 10, 20, uh, 10, 20 thousand dollars if you save between fifty and a hundred dollars. You can have that in five years. And like, like I say, and this with no marketing, that just fits it out. You're gonna have extra money, like I say, especially if you're not spending on a, on a rim. And then once you, you know, get your apartment, even if, if that apartment don't have no furniture, like, like me and my wife, we wait till we have the actual cash and stuff saved up. You know, for our couches, we don't go to the errands, furniture, or whatever. If we want a new couch or a new dining room table, we save up the money and pay cash for it. Like I say, you're gonna have to make smart decisions like that, you know, to be to be successful. Um, um, like I say, because you're gonna make plenty of money, but just, just just spend your money wisely. Like I say, if you just say that little fifty dollars. This this man, you had ten ten thousand, and this like I say, this just with fifty and a hundred dollars to a hundred dollars savings up. Five years, you're gonna have somewhere between ten. And twenty-five thousand dollars saved up. You can start any business with that kind of money. And like I say, that's just fifty and a hundred dollars just going into your savings account. But like I say, you can be making plenty more money. So even with your extra money on the side, and I tell everybody, man, especially, especially uh, guys, really ain't gas uh, uh, out there. Uh, just go ahead and get a truck. You mean you got a family, they got the, you know, the crew cab trucks. But now I tell anybody, just go ahead and get a van. Because you're gonna make some money, you know, you'll be able to make some money, you know, with a van. Because like I said, very important, especially when you get the contract license, to have your own equipment, or especially if you're working with another company. It's best to have your own equipment. So if you do go out there, when you got your contract license and you start doing side work, they can't, they can't say that you, you know, riding on their gas money or using any of their tools. Um, 
because I mean that's that's practically stealing and, and illegal to do. So it's very important. Just go ahead. You know, save that money on the side. Uh, just say you have because you're gonna have some uh, more money. So you might want to open up another account. Just say okay, this for my truck. You can name that savings account. You know, truck fund, truck and tools fund. So start duplicating everything. You may want to buy you a van on the side, just get you a van that costs like $5,000. Save up real quick. Like I say, I, I, want, I want financing. Uh, if you do financing, you know, you want to work on your credit or something, save the majority of the money. So this save you, go buy you a van for $8,000. Save up $5,000 and then finance the rest. You'll pay it out because you, you don't want the headache. You don't want the you you don't really want the idea or the, or the back of your mind. Okay, I, I have to have this job. Keep your funds real low or your bid. I mean, all your expenses real low. So just say if that company don't want you to be doing no work, you can go out there because your bill's not that much. You, you, you're not house poor. When I say house poor, or uh, uh, you stay in an apartments for because you're young, don't go out there and go, go get the expensive one. You do want to. You know, be in a safe environment that you don't have to worry about. You know, your tools or your house being broke in, but don't, but don't go. Uh, you know, get no, you know, expensive house that you have to be tied down to a nine to five job, and uh, and 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 you, and you just have to work. You know what I mean? So, like I said, be very wise with your money because you're gonna make a lot of it. Um, so. Yeah, working on the whole thing, get the LLC, let's go ahead and get that established, go to LegalZoom, go ahead and get the EIN number off top. To be honest with you, uh, you, you can probably find more videos or you can Google step-by-step -step how to do it, but I'll write that down right now and get started on it today or this week. Go to LegalZoom, uh, they do free consultation, talk to them, hey, tell them exactly what you need to do, say, hey, I want to open up, uh, start start my company. What do I need to do? We don't need to be procrastinating. Like I say, just do exactly what I say. Because once you get this established, come go on, come on with your five, uh, come up with your five hundred dollars real quick. As soon as you come up, and it's not that much. I think it's like two or three hundred dollars. I just say five hundred be on the safe side. Like I say, cause like I said earlier, this ain't no get rich quick scheme. Anything I tell you is gonna take some kind of money to do but really it's going to just take your hustle and your drive because uh, you got to think of mine too um, another thing when you work for a company and you're trying to do your thing on the side uh, or build your company on the side when I say build your company on the side it's not like actually doing the work because there's a lot of background work into this a lot of paperwork and I'm going to show you how to uh, in later videos, I'm, I'm gonna show you how to, uh, you know, get your clientele up, start the marketing. But I'm gonna do it one step at a time, you know. But those, those things are very important. Just go ahead and get your business set up. Cause once you have your business set up, doors gonna start opening up for you. You're gonna start getting wise. You, you're gonna start, you know, looking through like the third eye. You're gonna, okay, you can start hearing things different. You're gonna be more like business minded. Cause I know. Um, you know, a lot of technicians, you know, they really just worry about, um, you know, how to fix things. But you really want to get more sales oriented. You want to know how much things cost, you know, so you keep that stuff in the back of your mind. So when you run your business, you can even do it better or price things differently or price things the same way. A lot of my stuff, um, 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 like I say, because I put a lot of thought in a lot of thought in mind and like I say if I'm working for one of the biggest companies in my area and they charging you know a premium rate but they sending me to go out there and do the work uh, I find why, why, why if I'm if I'm gonna start my business I'm gonna be some, some, uh, somewhere right there in there I, I do not charge um, like I'm a chuck in the truck you know dirt cheap prices like 40 and 50 a lot of service calls no, no, I'm, I'm charging just what the uh, the other guy charged because like I say, if you do get the right insurance, I'm, I'm gonna show you how to uh, get the insurance too. Uh, but you don't need the insurance really until you get your contract license and you start going out there to uh, actually do the work. But 
the reason those companies, you know, charge a premium because, you know, they can guarantee they work. And like I said, I guarantee my work. I'm gonna do warranties. Um, uh, um, you know, I'm gonna try to give them the best equipment. I'm gonna have them give them options. Um, try to get to them in a timely fashion, just like any other company. I, 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 um, I establish myself just like any other company will. So um, I don't have all the resources that the bigger companies got. That's why I won't charge at the top, but I'm gonna be somewhere, uh, uh, you know, in there. And I, ha I have a lot of relationships uh, in this industry. So nine times out of ten, if it's something that I can't do, I can refer them to somebody. So, but uh, I hope y'all find these tips uh, helpful. Like I said, hit that like and subscribe button. You can share this information. 